everybody. Welcome back or welcome if this is your first time stopping by. My name is Tina Hurley. I am the founder and CEO of Less Leg More Heart, a charity that helps amputees with support, supplies, and services that improve their quality of life. We love bringing tales of inspiration and companies that have vetted products and services for the community and the disabled community that improve the lives of folks uh, everywhere. Because the more eyes and ears see it and hear it, the more this information can spread, the more funding that we can get, and the more lives that change for the better. The better they become community members and the better everybody is as a whole. Uh, and so today it was, it's amazing to have been in this facility because today I'm at Mobius Mobility and I have the pleasure of trying out a unit today, meeting the team, and I'm sitting here with Luke and Luke is the CEO of this company. He has been involved in this process of design and build and redoing and all of the layman terms I don't know for the development process, but thank you so much for sitting with me, Luke. And, um, oh, it's wonderful. Um, I wanna know everything, you know, uh, when did you start with this company? How did you start with this company? Sure, uh, it's a long story, uh, so buckle up. Uh, so this here at Mobius is actually the second uh, life, the second generation of the iBot. And I worked on the first generation um, a long time ago, more than 20 years ago. Um, and going even further back, the iBot was conceived and invented by Dean Kamen here in Manchester. I think a lot of folks in New Hampshire, certainly a technology world globally and here in New Hampshire and Manchester know Dean very well. Um, and Dean actually uh, invented the iBot in the early 1990s. And he actually uh, did it because he saw a young man in a manual wheelchair up on Elm Street trying to get up, get up a curb and struggling uh, to get up a, you know, a five, six inch curb. And he thought and, and still thinks to this day uh, that it's unreasonable and unac unacceptable in this day and age that, you know, we can fly across the country, across the globe, trying to talk about people going up into outer space commercially for tourism, but we can't get folks with a disability, let alone up a curb just across town mm. from point A to B independently. Amen. And so they, uh, Dean put, pulled together a small team of engineers to prototype and try out a number of different concepts, uh, most of which, you know, probably weren't gonna be workable or reliable or meet all the mobility objectives until uh, one morning he actually slipped in the shower and to keep from falling, he whirled his hands around in a gyroscopic motion to get that, that counteractive force. And then he realized the time he, he told me, I didn't know if it was feasible or how hard it would be, but if I wanted to get a vehicle to go where someone who walks go, it needs to do what a walking person does. And what does a walking person do? Well, they, they balance. Um, and so they prototyped something up pretty quick. It worked really, really well. That's right when I got involved is they had a, a very primitive prototype. And by prim primitive, I mean it was uh, a gyroscope from Dean's plane uh, a pair of bicycle chains, two uh, small underpowered electric motors from his mom's sewing machine and a metal plate, but you could plug it in and sit on it and this machine would balance on, on two wheels. Um, and Dean's primary business is his business model at DECA, which is right down the street from us, is to come up with ideas like that. And because medical devices are so expensive to develop and get through the FDA, he almost always partners with a large company to help fund the development and in return for that funding and that cooperation, they get the right to market the product in a field. And so we were lucky enough to partner with Johnson & Johnson. So Fortune 50, I believe probably the largest healthcare company on the planet. Hey, my son uses their shampoo every day. Yeah, they do consumer <laughs> products. And many people don't know they do consumer products, but they do a lot of life sciences, pharmaceuticals, medical devices. They pioneered a lot of breakthrough products and they were wonderful and J&J you know, funded the development for, you know, upwards of seven or eight years and almost $150 million to get it fully developed through the FDA. It was, there was nothing like it at the time. There frankly still isn't, but because it was brand new, we had to do clinical trials, which is pretty rare. It's actually unheard of, I think, almost in the, in the wheelchair world. Goes go through full clinical trials and an FDA clearance. And then Johnson & Johnson marketed and sold the device for roughly seven or eight years from about 2003 till almost 2010. And they couldn't secure um, reimbursement uh, for the product. Um, their approach at the time was to, because it was a brand new type of product, they asked 
Medicare for brand new uh, reimbursement code and a reimbursement level and were denied. And so they kept plugging away, basically trying to help people cash pay or get get insurance where they could, but couldn't make a go of it. So in 2009, they, they announced that they wouldn't be manufacturing any new iBots, but to their credit, um, said they'd, they'd keep supporting the ones in the field past their warranty date until 2014. Um, and then 2014, they said, we, we're, we're stopping entirely and shut the company down. Um, and then not long after, uh, in fact, almost immediately after, I know, because I, I had since moved on to something else uh, I'm down in Massachusetts, but Dean and I have always kept in touch. And so I, I knew what was going on. Um, uh, Dean almost immediately started getting phone calls from users saying, you know, can you help? You know, I'm going to need a new iBot. This old one, you know, some of these iBots now. Imagine were... getting that. Yeah. access to life I think it's taken away. because insurance didn't have the ability to fund the company couldn't continue and now you don't have the ability yeah. anymore yeah. that is like devastating yeah it was pretty heartbreaking yeah. pretty heartbreaking and Dean has a big heart <laughs> and so he was like okay what can we do and again to, to Johnson and Johnson's credit um, I think a lot of times you know companies you know get a bad rap maybe they engage in bad behavior but J&J &J was always awesome you know, such a first-class group of people and company after all that investment, you know, they basically went to Dean and said, we'll sell you the rights back for one crisp dollar bill because we think the product's what important. People. What yeah. good people. Uh, and, and you do it. You know, as, as a public company, we can't. We have shareholders. We have to, we have to do right by them. But we believe in it We believe in the product. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. And j, j people continue to help us, actually, you know, after we did that. And so Dean, you know, at this point, the product was probably, the technology was probably, you know, more, well more than 10 years old, probably close to 12 or 13 years outdated. Um, and so Dean kicked off, you know, with his own firm and his own investment, a complete redesign of the product. Um, and so the new iBot was uh, designed and developed from about 2015 to about 2018. Um, it looks somewhat similar, but it's, uh, it's quite a bit uh, more compact. It's a lot lighter weight, it has all updated electronics. And probably the biggest change, and we did this with the support of the user community who came down to testify to the FDA, is the first iBot was, was approved as a class three medical device, okay. which is basically the highest tier of FDA oversight because there was nothing, nothing like it mm -hmm. um, to compare it to. Right. And because of the track record of that first version where, you know, give or take, you, they, they sold about, about eight, seven or 800 units. You sit in a wheelchair, 14, 15, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. You can easily come up, you do the math, it's well over 10 million hours of operation that was safe and effective. And so when we went back through to the FDA to get cleared, um, with users coming with us to testify, we asked, could you make it a class two device? And what that means, what that helped us do is the new iBot um, is, is the seating, everything up from the power base can be completely configured and changed for each user, so great. which is a big deal, it's right? A big deal. The old iBot had one seat, that's all you got. We couldn't change it um, because you have to go back through the FDA. The new iBot for every user that comes through, we can configure a seat nice. just for them. And so we sold um, our first new, of the new iBot in December of 2019. Actually, the gentleman in the team is right above you in that picture. Oh, nice. Yep, um, that's the very first one. Uh, oh, timing wasn't so great. December of 19, pandemic starts uh, roughly six weeks later. Um, so we had to go quiet and work from home. We do have a, you know, a business where we have to be here. We right. build things. We work. Yes. We have work with users. We've got hands-on users up close. And so we basically shut down um, for, you know, most of 2020. 2021 was the year when we were sort of back up and running after the pandemic. Uh, 2022 was awesome. Um, a big push starting in in 2021 was to see if we get insurance coverage right. for the iBot. Where um, is insurance on these? So it's not, uh, we're not there yet, um, but we're working on it. Insurance is complicated um, and the healthcare industry um, and the government does not make it easy, especially for a small company um, to get in a place where they're even you know, allowed to submit insurance claims. Um, and so you have to do a lot of additional testing. You have to do a lot of paperwork, policies, procedures, you name it, background checks on your people, drug testing on your on your folks, which a lot of that, unfortunately, is because there's a fair bit of, of fraud in some parts of insurance. And so they want to make sure that, you know, companies are, you know, on the up and up, which is understandable. Um, 
but we're but doing it. If the FDA is giving you a green light, you know, and then you're having to sort of redo stuff, yeah. I can I can see how that's. Yeah, a lot. one of the one of the one of the things you learn and about, um, unfortunately, about the government is is just because one federal agency yeah. says one thing does not mean that that the other agency like they're will not. It's a disjointed thing. Yeah, and the, the people that suffer from that lack of connectivity is the people that are stuck under yeah. those curbs and you know the everyday person that just needs yeah. the extra help which yeah. is sad. So I think you know I can't I can't unfortunately cuz it's out of our control I can't give a time frame as to when it's going to happen but I'm um, confident it, it will at some point. And that really is the difference. Funding is the only limitation to these people having access to these devices to help them live their best lives, right? Agreed. Yeah, totally. I mean the, the the thing that I often say to the to the insurance folks and the regulators is this isn't a research project. This isn't a drug which might be 10 years out. We're not looking to do a clinical trial. We're ready. This product <laughs> exists now. Yeah. It's been cleared by the it's FDA here already. Like it's, in yep. a car lot. it's made like, in the USA. <laughs> yeah. We know how to fit people to it. We yes. know how to train You're people to it. We're manufacturing in house with products that are in the same building. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's you all know? made here in Manchester. Right. Um, so it's available now. And that is frustrating when, when you've got a product which. And you just tried it, um, but I've, I've never. The reason I came back when Dean asked me to come back and 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 run Mobius Mobility for him was I've never seen a product which makes people so happy instantaneously. It's because um, it's because you your whole world that's been closed in because of all of the obstacles in everyday life that make it them big barriers that you cannot traverse with the technology that you have. You're used to just graying out all the color in your life to this one spot, and you accept it. Yeah. And what you've just done for, for every person that gets in that chair is you've just shown a huge light back on yeah. all of the color of their life. And that epiphany yeah. and the you know that hope that I feel like dies in part of us when we have so many hard things that we go through, you've just given that yeah. back to everybody and, and then to try it. And if I needed it 100% of the time, to be able to try it like that and not be able to use it because of money. So one of, one of my personal favorite things to do, and you'll hear this a lot from people that work at Mobius, is the first few times, and even even after someone's had an iBot for a while, is just going out in town around with someone. And especially if they're a new user and you come up to a curb and there's no curb cut, or you come up to some steps at a restaurant and they kind of, for a minute, they look a little like, what are we gonna do? Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna, go you're, gonna you're gonna head up and <laughs> we're gonna go in. Well, I was just telling the team, you know, when you're in front of the obstacle or at the top of the stairs or in a place naturally, it's a visceral reaction as a user that otherwise is in a place of either danger or lack of access because of years and years and decades of that self ingrained thought. So there is that, I'm sure, barrier of like comfort for people to go, I can do it. Wow, I can do it. How exciting. Yeah. How wonderful is it to be able to work for a company, like have a job that has the potential to, to literally change people's lives in this That's kind of great. way. How it's great. Wonderful. Yeah, it's great. And, and, and Mobius is, is where I focus and it's wonderful, but there's so much going on in this milliard. Man Manchester literally is becoming the the epicenter of innovation for medical devices. Incredible. It well, really, I... it really, there's so much going on here. You, you'd need a whole like weekend of show to cover it. It well, goes on and on. We can make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Show, yeah, yeah. I'll bring you yeah. on. But so right now we're like, we're, like you said, we're, we're building iBots. We've got users out um, in many states across the country. Um, we're providing iBots overseas in Europe in several countries, and we're cranking away on this insurance thing. And um, you know, one thing people should be aware of, and you, you just touched on it, it's a key distinction. A lot of a lot of folks outside um, our outside the disability community and outside of our our industry don't realize is is there is actually you know a law, a regulation on the books at Medicare that says that Medicare will only reimburse for a mobility device to the extent it's needed for mobility related activities of daily living inside the home. That one line is why all this is so difficult. And if the government, and I don't think it's gonna happen at Medicare, I think it needs to happen through Congress with legislation, would just say those same MRADLs in the home and just add, and in the community. With you know what? If those same people that made those rules, as someone that's had several, several surgeries that has been homebound and isolated in a home without fresh air, without direct sunlight, um, those people obviously have not been in that position in their life because the mental health and the just life force de depletion that I experienced from just months of that, not years like some of these chronically ill people that need these chairs. I mean, we are basically plants. 
Like we need light and we need air to function, to, to be vibrant, to have zest, just to be clean. Yeah, and guess what? All your friends and family want, they feel that too. You're not out with them and that affects them too. Everybody. So you need it, but so does everybody else. It's it okay doesn't, you, none of it makes any sense. It's okay if you never go to like one of your children's softball games, yeah, right? It's okay right. if you it's just okay. are absent yeah. as a parent. Exactly. It's sickening. Or you can't go to church or you can't go to see your parents. So it's, un, yeah, it's unacceptable. And so that, that is a problem, which frankly is, is a lot bigger than Mobius. And yeah, I think it's gonna, is gonna, if I say anything to, to, you, to, your, to your viewership, and by the way, the, the New Hampshire congressional delegation has been wonderful. They've been very supportive of us, is to work with them and work with, if you're another state, and let con your Congress people know that this, yeah. this needs to change. And it's not like, it is not a budget buster. Like, I understand, like, health, there's not a lot of extra money lying around the healthcare system, and Medicare is financially challenged. Everybody knows that. This is not, you're not talking about a ton of people and you're talking about if you could get them out to your point in the community, they'll be healthier, they'll be happier, they'll be more employed. It, it just doesn't make any sense. And, and getting the system to get out of its own way to do that is, is going to take... Um, and it's it's going to take a lot of effort from a lot of people. Yeah, and this isn't the only industry that's... I mean, the, the system as a whole, I mean, working as a clinician and with a lot of different professions and DME suppliers... Uh, it's just there's there's a lot of system failures that culminate in uh, in this in the circus and it's an uphill battle and I'm just so grateful that there are companies and leaders like you that are out there banging down the doors and really pushing because otherwise if you guys and Dean weren't so passionate about bringing this to help people it it could have died like it was almost on in route to do but so many people believed in it and just pushed and pushed and pushed against such tremendous resistance because it because it matters. And that's just so amazing. I mean, if I had anything to say to our viewers, I would say, number one, if you see things coming up for companies like this, where there is a meeting of minds and any kind of states persons where your opinion is going to be aired out, attend it, if, you know, submit a virtual vote or, or testimony, whatever you can do, but also consider donating your funds or sponsoring funds as a company to provide these chairs for people. At this time, because insurance isn't funding it, it's either self-funded by the, by the person in their family or, it's, or money is raised. And it's not an insurmountable amount of money that it can't be done for people that need it. You know, it's a $32,000 base price, I think. And I mean, you're, you're talking about buying a res relatively low-end vehicle for someone that does all the things and goes all the places in their home in their life. I mean, that's the investment in their quality of life that you're able to make. And um, so right now, the nonprofit sector and philanthropic, loving, kind community members like you are the people that are making this accessible for people that need it. So if you haven't already, make sure that you've checked out um, this company. I Look into iBot. You can DM us, message us for more information. Luke, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing the backend information. Thank you, Dean, for doing all of the things that you do to make this world a better place. And for everyone that stopped in today, I hope that you come back again. And as always, make sure to put your best foot forward.